Hi everyone, welcome back to Kitchen Science with Holly for Becker School Supplies. So today we're gonna to talk about mixtures. Have you heard that word before? What do you think a mixture is? A yeah, mixture is when you take two or more different substances and you combine them or mix them. Like you can take chocolate syrup and combine it with milk. What do you get? Right, you get chocolate milk, a delicious mixture. What happens if you take nuts and raisins and mix them up with chocolate chips? You get another really delicious mixture, a trail mix. You'll notice that my favorite mixtures are food because <laughs> we use mixtures a lot when we cook. Now, some mixtures, like our trail mix, are really easy to unmix. So if you don't like chocolate chips in your trail mix, you can easily take them out. But some mixtures are really hard to unmix, like our chocolate milk. Can you take the syrup back out of chocolate milk once you mix it all together? Oh, that'd be really hard. Now, there's also lots of different ways to make mixtures, which is what we're going to explore today. But before we do that, I have a story that I want to share with you. Are you ready to hear the story? Great. So this story is called The Mixed Up Truck by Stephen Savage. So let's look closely at our cover here. What do you notice about this cover? You may have noticed there's a brick, a brick building in the background. You may have noticed there's a truck in front of that building. Now this truck is very special. Do you know what kind of truck it is? Hmm, so he has that drum on the back that's red and white striped and it's got powder coming out of it. This is a cement mixer. What do you think a cement mixer does on a construction site? Yeah, it mixes the cement. All right, so let's see how our cement mixer is the mixed up truck. The Mixed Up Truck by Stephen Savage. It was the cement mixer's first day on the job. All the other trucks were hard at work. Hmm, do you think cement mixer is nervous about his first day at work? Maybe. Now we can see the other trucks in the background here. Do they look like the cement mixer? Hmm, they might have different jobs than our cement mixer. The crane was lifting, the dump truck was dumping, and the digger was digging. They all have very different jobs than our cement mixer. That means they also have different things on them to help them to do their jobs. So the crane has a hook and the digger has a scoop. All very different than our cement mixer. How can I help? Asked the cement mixer. Mix up some powdery white cement, said the trucks. Seems easy enough. So where is our cement mixer? It looks like he's at a building and he's picking up some white powder. Hmm. I noticed that this building has a very special sign on it. And that sign says, flour. Hmm. So the cement mixer mixed up the white powder, added a little water, and presto, a cake. Did he make cement? He added a white powder to water just like he was supposed to. It was the wrong white powder. He didn't use cement, he used flour. And when he mixed them together, he got a cake instead of the cement. Oh my goodness gracious. How do all the trucks feel about that, do you think? Look at them. They don't look happy. Personally, I'd be pretty happy if a giant cake showed up in front of me, but the trucks need cement. You got mixed up, said the trucks. Go mix up some powdery white cement. Oh, he's rushing off. He doesn't look happy. But do you think he's going to fix it this time? Let's find out. So he's at another building. So it's a different building. He's not going to get flour this time. He's getting white powder. But this building says sugar. The cement mixer mixed up the white powder, added a little water. What's he going to make? And presto, frosting. Oh no. So he still got white powder and he still got water, but it was the wrong powder. Instead, it was sugar this time, so he made delicious frosting. Again, nobody looks happy about this. This cake is looking more and more delicious, if you ask me. 
You got mixed up again, said the trucks. Go mix up some powdery white cement. What happened to our cake in this picture? Why does it look that way? It's starting to melt in the sun. Oh, it's too hot. The cement mixer is now at a different building. So he's going to get try a third time to mix up cement. So this building sign says cement. Ooh, I think he's going to get it right this time. The cement mixer mixed up the white powder, added a little water, and presto, a building. It looks an awful lot like our cake. So how do you think everyone feels now? Right, he mixed up the right ingredients this time to get the cement to build the building. Now the trucks were dusty and tired. After all of that, they looked pretty tired. But the cement mixer needed to get one more load of white powder. Hmm, what do you think he's going to go get this time to mix up with water? These are good predictions, let's find out. The cement mixer mixed up a white powder, added a little water, and presto. What does the sign say? S-O-A-P, soap. A bubble bath! He made a bubble bath to clean all of the dusty, tired trucks. Do they look happy now? They certainly do. And now they can go to sleep. Did you like that story? What was your favorite part? My favorite part when, is when the cake started to melt and all of the trucks were stuck in the sticky frosting. That was my favorite part. <laughs> so as I was reading the story, I started to think about how cement trucks mix. Because if you've ever seen a cement truck, you'll see that it has the drum on the back of it and the drum spins. So I started to think, how does that spinning mix up the cement? And I want to show you a little bit about what's hidden inside a cement truck to make it such a good mixer. All right, let's take a close look. So here we go. We're going to pretend that this jar of beans is our cement, okay? So this is like the drum of our cement mixer. Now these are, isn't really cement, these are beans, they're little cannellini beans. Now, to have a true mixture, we've got to add something else, right? You've got to add two or more substances. So we're going to add these. These little red things right here are lentils. So I'm going to pour them on. Oop, I, well, I, I spilled a little bit here. I always spill a little bit here. I'm just going to put some more in and just brush it off. There we go. Very nice. So now you can see we've got two substances in our mixture. So we've got our lentils and our beans. So now if we do what we can see on a cement truck and sort of just spin our drum, are they getting mixed? Hmm. They're not really mixed. We still have our lentils and our beans that are they're just sort of sitting on top of each other. Because what you don't see inside a cement truck is this. Now, this is what it looks like inside a cement truck. This is a tool that you use to dig in the garden, but we're going to use it to make our cement truck here mix. Okay, so you can see I spin it, and the metal wheel sort of looks like it goes up and down when I spin it. So I'm going to stick it inside my cement drum here, and now I'm going to spin the drum again and watch what happens. What's happening? Right, everything got mixed this time. Because now that we have that spiral in the center, it's mixing our cement. Now look what's really cool when you spin it the other way. So we're spinning it the other way. Oh my goodness, and it actually lifts it up out of the truck again. Pretty cool. Isn't it neat that all of that mixing is happening inside a cement mixer's drum and we can't even see it? So cool. So it's time to make some mixtures of our own, okay? I want you to gather these supplies. And what I want you to do is I want you to take a little bit of the milk and you're gonna pour it into the bottom of the plate or the bowl or the tray that you're going to use to make our mixture today. Okay, it doesn't matter how much milk you add, just enough to cover the bottom. Now, while you're doing that, I want to talk a little bit about the way that we mix things, okay? Think back to that first mixture, the chocolate milk. What did we add to make chocolate milk? Right, milk and chocolate syrup. Now, what do you use to mix? What sort of tools would you use to mix up that chocolate milk? 
great. You'd probably use a spoon and a glass and stir it. Now, are there other ways to make chocolate milk from milk and syrup? Hmm. Now with your grump's permission, next time you make chocolate milk, I want you to try two different ways. I want you to try to see if you can smush your chocolate milk together. Put your milk and your syrup into a Ziploc bag and make sure it's zipped nice and tight at the top and smush it together. Do you think you'd get chocolate milk? I think you would. And then what about if you put it in a jar with a lid and then you close the lid up nice and tight and you shake the jar? Do you think you get chocolate milk then? I wonder if it would taste different. Hmm. So you could make chocolate milk by stirring, by smushing, and by shaking. You could do all of those things to make a really cool mixture. Now the mixture we're gonna make, we're not going to stir, we're not gonna smush, and we're not gonna shake. We're gonna use a chemical reaction to mix some colors in our milk. Are you ready? Great. So you'll see on this camera here that I've got my milk on a uh, plate here. Now you may notice there's some reflections from my lights in my milk. You may have different reflections in your milk. You may even be able to see your own face when you look into it like a mirror. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add some food coloring to our uh, milk. I'm going to start with pink. You can start with whatever color you want. Now, good scientists make predictions each step of their experiment. So I'm going to make a prediction. I'm going to add two drops of pink to my milk. And my prediction is it's going to turn the milk pink. Okay, all the milk will turn pink. Okay, so let's see if my prediction is correct. So I'm going to take my food coloring and I'm going to add two drops. One, two. Hmm. Did it turn all of the milk pink? No, the color sort of stayed in one spot. Hmm. So I'm gonna add one more color. I'm gonna add blue. Now I'm gonna predict this time that the blue is gonna do what the pink did, which is not color all of the milk, just color the milk in the one spot I do my drops. Now see, that's what's so cool about science. You can learn something by doing an experiment and it changes your prediction and it helps you to learn even more when you do the experiment again. So this time I'm going to predict it's going to do the same thing that our pink did when I add my blue. Now you can add whatever color you want here. So I'm going to add two drops of blue. Here I go. One, two. It did the same thing. My prediction this time was right because I learned so much the first time I did the experiment. So I'm gonna add a third color. You can pick whatever color you want. I'm gonna add yellow and I predict the same thing's gonna happen. Here we go. One, two. Ooh, a third drop got in there too. That's all right. So now let's look closely at our milk. What do we see? Does your milk look like this now? Very cool. So we've got three different spots of color. Now they all spread a little bit differently, but they're all sort of staying in one spot. So have our colors started mixing yet? Nope, they have not. So what I want you to do now is I want you to take your Q-tip, okay? So you're going to take your little Q-tip or your toothpick and you're going to scoop up some of your dish soap. Now, we're not going to use the Q-tip to stir our milk to mix our colors together. We're going to use the Q-tip or the toothpick to add a little bit of soap to our milk. And a chemical reaction between the soap and the milk is going to mix our colors for us. Okay? So I'm going to make a prediction. When I add my soap to my milk, it's going to bubble. Because I've seen bubbles when we use our soap to clean our dishes. All right, so I'm going to scoop up some soap here. You do the same, and I'm going to drop it right in between my colors, and I think I'm going to see bubbles. Whoa! What happened? Well, I can tell you that I did not see any bubbles. So my prediction was not right, but what happened was so much cooler. I see so much mixing and I didn't even touch the milk. I see green being swirled around, I see purples and it's still going. What does your milk look like now? It's just amazing. 
very cool. Now you could change this experiment. You could add more color. You could add more soap. You could try whole milk or skim milk. You can try warm milk or cold milk. You could try milks that don't come from cows. You could try almond milk or oat milk and see if you get the same results. But let's look a little closer and talk about why this is happening. All right, so you see this little spot here? That's where I added my soap. And the soap is doing what we want soap to do. When we add soap to our dishes, we're trying to clear away all of the food that gets stuck to them. And the soap does that by breaking down the food that's left behind. And that's exactly what it's doing here. It's breaking down the fats in our milk. And while it's doing that, it looks like it's mixing up our colors because as it's um, moving the fats around inside the milk, it's taking the colors with it. So we can see all those colors are being swirled around without us even touching that milk. Pretty cool stuff. What'd you think of that? It's my favorite way to mix colors. <laughs> so we have time for one more really cool mixture experiment. So go ahead and gather these supplies. Now, if you don't have these supplies on hand or you missed a couple of steps of the first experiment, no worries. This whole recording is going to be available on the Becker's website. And at the very end, I'm going to put up step-by-step -step instructions and complete supply lists for both experiments. So you can do them again or you can pick up what you missed. Sound good? Great. So this last mixture looks pretty simple. All it is is cornstarch and water. So it's a cup and a half of cornstarch mixed with a cup of water. Now, I'm not going to mix them on the camera here because I want you to experience that yourself because it's going to tell you a lot about this very mysterious mixture. It doesn't do what you expect it to do. Okay, so I want to give you a little sneak peek of sort of those weird things that this mystery mixture does. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tap my mixture. You can see it here on the screen. It looks basically what you would expect cornstarch and water to look like. It looks like a milky white liquid. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tap it. What happens when you tap a liquid like milk? Yeah, it splashes and it makes waves, okay? And your fingers sort of st stick into it and you get all sort of milky on your hands. So let's see what happens when I tap this liquid. Now it may have been hard to see, but there were no waves and no splashing. It didn't act at all like you would expect a liquid to react. It acted like a solid. So it felt a lot like rubber. Now this time, I'm not going to tap my mixture. I'm going to rest my fingers on it. What do you think is going to happen? Think the same thing maybe? Well, let's find out. So here we go. I'm going to put my fingers on. I'm just, what is going on? Now it's acting just like a liquid, just what you would expect. If I put my fingers in milk, this is exactly what it would look like. But ugh, I try to pull it out and they're stuck. Huh, so now it looks drippy and gooey. But if I tap it again, it's nice and hard. This is a crazy mixture. It's what we call a non-Newtonian fluid. And sometimes it acts like a liquid, like milk, and sometimes it acts like a solid, like rubber. So I want you to really explore this non-Newtonian fluid, okay? I want you to grab it. I want you to squeeze it. I want you to mix it. I want you to drip it. I want you to pour it. I want you to try everything. And I want you to see sometimes it acts like a liquid and sometimes it acts like a solid. And the more you learn about it, I want you to share as a family. Talk about it. Does it work the same with big hands or little hands? What happens if you pour it out to a big sheet or keep it in a bowl? Try all of those things and talk about it as a family. And while you're doing that, share it with us. We had some great families share some awesome experiments with us after last week, and we'd love to see what your family's up to using really cool mixtures. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Keep talking, keep experimenting, keep having fun, and keep learning together as a family. Thanks so much, and see you again next week.